Good morning, everyone. कल के वर्कशॉप से टाइमनेस खत्म हुआ मेरा नहीं खत्म हुआ है टाइम स्टिल टाइम सो टुडे वी बी टॉकिंग अबाउट पी एन एस यू सेडे इट वॉज ऑल अल्ट्रा टू एंड राइट नाउ आई थिंक फॉर लास्ट टू ईयर्स आई डोंट यूज मच ऑफ पी एन एस सो आई हैव टू बॉरो सम वीडियोज from hithal from my friend yunosh and from santosh so i am sorry for that it's not my original video because the time when i used to do pns i didn't have this concept of making videos and doing a youtube channel but when i started doing other now i started making videos and i have got plenty on my youtube channel so now coming to the main topic i think in the yesterday workshop those who were there i think uh, the infraclavicular infraclavicular area everybody must have seen right i think in ultrasound i saw you saw you saw the medial infraclavicular space and even the lateral infraclavicular space and in the cadaveric i think you must have all seen so understanding this thing is not difficult now this is a place where you give your one block which yesterday we talked about as oxoclavicular and at this place you give your lateral so this is a medial space and this is a lateral space same with the pls there are two techniques where you block at the medial level and at the lateral level. i'm not going into much of detail of anatomy so these are the three cords which we block at the infraclavicular level the lateral cord the medial cord and the posterior cord and these are the nerves these five important nerves which are required mainly for your surgery where you block they all three these all five will be blocked if you block at the cord level okay and uh, this is a very a simplified way uh, diagram of see the contribution of the three cords the lateral cord gets the contribution from the superior trunk and the middle trunk the posterior cord from the all the three trunks and the medial cord from the inferior trunk and the lateral cord mainly supplies the proximal flexors this your this your this this proximal flexors your elbow flexion and your wrist flexion is mainly supplied by the lateral cord because the need this is because of your musculocutaneous and this is because of the lateral part of the median nerve because the median nerve gets contribution from the lateral cord and also from the medial cord so the lateral part of median nerve causes wrist flexion why i am telling this this will help you when you are doing those who are do pls it's all depends on the responses so if you correctly judge the response you can very well define your stimulating which cord and the posterior cord supplies all the proximal extensors right and the medial cord the distal flexors okay so if you are getting a finger flexor response all fingers it means you are stimulating the medial cord suppose you are not getting your finger response but you are getting a wrist flexion it means you are stimulating the lateral cord and any extension response means you are stimulating the posterior cord so lateral cord causes elbow flexion supination and pronation right and wrist flexion the medial cord wrist and finger flexion and adduction of the fingers and the posterior cord will <coughs> call all the <coughs> extension elbow wrist and finger extension clear 
So why we need an intracranial fever? Which surgery is we can do? Any surgery from the mid-arm level, except the shoulders, below the shoulders, till your fingers, any surgery you can do in your intracranial fever. They have been described many approaches of intracranial fever. But the most important two approach which we follow is the vertical intraclavicular block and the paracoracoid approach. These are the two approach which we regularly follow. And this is the area where you block. The VIV just below the clavicle means the medial intraclavicular compartment and the paracoracoid you block the lateral intraclavicular compartment. That is the only difference. And after yesterday workshop, I think your concept of medial intraclavicular compartment and lateral intraclavicular compartment must be clear. If it's not clear, then it's the fault of people who are teaching cadaveric and fault of people who are teaching ultrasound. Okay? So in a paracaracoid approach, you mark 2 cm medial and 2 cm cordard from the coracoid process. And how you palpate the coracoid process? Can anybody tell? Because there are so many bony structures out here, it's difficult. So put your fingers just at the lateral part of clavicle, just at the highest point of your dentopectoral root, just below the clavicle, and try to just take your arm in and out. The bony structure which will hit your fingers is your coracoid process. Because the palpation of coracoid process <coughs> will help you in doing a successful block at the first attempt. From there you mark 2 cm medial and 2 cm cordar and your little comes anterior posterior and you block the three cocks. This is a very simplified approach, right? But there are a lot of variations at this level. Yesterday I, you saw, right? At the medial intraclavicular space, the anatomical arrangement is same. It doesn't change it. But in the lateral, it is a lot of variation. And if you are unlucky that you get a patient whose medial cord is here, whose posterior cord is here, and whose lateral cord is here, then you are having a tough time. In that scenario, the ultrasound helps. Right? Because in PLS, okay, compared to the parasitia technique, you have got one guy. But if there is a variation, an anatomical variation happens. So, as Javis sir told, those who are practicing PNS, if possible, switch over to ultrasound. And I will tell you, you will have a PNS is fun, but ultrasound is more fun. Okay, because you see and block. So, very correct approach: patient supine, head rotated to one side. Arms can be abducted or adapted. That's the advantage of a supra, uh, intra uh, clavicular approach. Palpate the coracoid process, 2 cm medial and 2 cm cordard is your needle insertion point. And the needle goes in a perpendicular anterior posterior direction. The first response usually you get is the contraction of the pec muscles. As you yesterday you saw, you have the pec major pet minor and then you have the vessels and then you have the cord around. So, uh, thanks to Hazel Bhai for preparing the schedule nicely so that yesterday after ultrasound you can just analyze what you saw and what are the structures that you cross. So, initial response is the pet response and as you go inside Usually, the first response is the lateral cord. But this patient, just last week, 
For this presentation, I wanted to do a PNS after two years, and the first response which I got was a medium cut response. So variations, and the medium cut response is flexion of all the fingers. Okay, primarily the little finger. If you are getting flexion of all the fingers and opposition of thumb, it means you are stimulating the medial cord. And if you are getting a medial, the ideal response, what I have been told is a posterior cord response. But if you are getting a medial cord response, don't search for posterior cord. Because the success rate is almost 90%. Okay? So if you are getting a medial cord response, don't search, don't waste your time. The ideal response to your posterior cord is a posterior cord. So, unnecessary, there is no point. So, give a drug if you are getting a posterior cord response. The first response which usually you get, if there is not of much of anatomical variation, is the lateral cord response. And this is a video of Ethel Bai. Thank you, Ethel Bai, for giving me this video. And you have elbow flexion because of the stimulation of muscular cutaneous and the flexion of three and a half fingers which is supplied by the lateral part of the medium nerve. Okay? So, but this is unacceptable response. Okay? Because the failure rate is almost 90%. So, if you are getting a lateral cord response, then you have to search for either a posterior cord or a medial cord. And this is a Posterior cord response, extension. Okay? And all, always go for a distal response as an acceptable response. If you are getting a wrist extension, but try to get a finger extension. Because the distal responses are the most acceptable response. Okay? And the, the success rate with posterior cord response is almost 96%. So, Search for posterior cord response if you are getting a lateral cord response and if you are getting a medial cord response, don't waste your time in searching for the ideal response. The clinical curves, as you know, blocks occur at the cord level. Anatomy is quite variable. Okay? So you might be having, if you are unlucky one, you might have a tough time getting your block. Lateral cord is the most superficial as we saw yesterday. Next is usually the posterior cord. So, usual response which maximum people we get when you, we do a PNS is a lateral cord response followed by a posterior cord as we go slightly more deeper. The median nerve is formed by both lateral and posterior cord, uh, sorry, medial and lateral cord. Radial nerve of the posterior cord and musculocutaneous nerve is almost outside at this level. So, if you are getting a musculocutaneous response, it is not an ideal response. You have to search for the posterior cord response. And I will suggest everybody when you go back today or even free, download this article from Pradeep sir. It's a beautiful article. The intracarabide vertical approach for intradiacular brachial block by neurostimulation. Please go through this article. Your maximum funda of intradiacular block, the pericarabide approach will be clear. Now coming to the VIP. It was described by Kilka and it is nothing but the injection in an anterior posterior direction just below the clavicle in a midpoint between the jugular fossa and the acromion process. Your middle goes perpendicular in an anterior posterior direction and you block at a place where yesterday I described the optoclavicular approach. And the advantage is the anatomical arrangement is constant. The first response which you will get if you are in a right midpoint, will be the lateral cord. Okay? The right response. Because the lateral cord is the most superficial. Yesterday, I think, everybody saw. 
Okay? So, the anatomical configuration which are important because it's a block. If you do a good landmark evaluation, then you will have success in the first attempt. The first is the jugular fossa, right? The second is the acromion process. You draw a line, straight line connecting the two, and the needle is the midpoint, just below the clavicle. Same head turn one side, arm you can either adapt, okay, or adapt. If, the patient, if possible, adapt. If the patient starts, then do abduction. Little goes almost mm -hmm. perpendicular to the skin, but never direct your little medium. Because yesterday you all saw the pleura is so superficial. There are chances of injuring the pleura. Okay? So, the first response will be save the lateral part response. And the second response, if you are slightly lateral, will be the posterior cord response. And somehow if you have missed the lateral cord response and gone deeper, you will get the medial cord. Because yesterday I think everybody can just analyze the ultrasound sonar anatomy. The lateral cord was most superficial and interior. Below that was the medial cord. And posterior lateral to the lateral cord was the posterior cord. So, I think right now even when you do, those who are doing PNS after attending the sonar anatomy ultrasound workshop, I think it will be better of, for you to just recollect and what you have saw of manipulating your needles. Okay? Clinical works in VIV. Accurate palpation of acromion process. This is the most important thing. Because as I told, same as the coropoid process, you have so much bony landmarks here, you have to accurately palpate the acromion process. Because if you the jugular process is easy. This is a jugular fossa, but the palpation of ac acromion process is perfect palpation is required because your needle insertion point depends on that. So how do you do that? Look it from behind. And thanks to Malik for a beautiful animation which he had given to Hethel and Hethel gave me. So, you palpate from behind, put your hand on the spine of scapula, which you can always feel, and from there, glide your hand lateral. Okay? The most lateral most point is your acromion process. Okay? And just then you draw a straight line connecting the acromion process to the jugular fossa. Accurate identification of midpoint. This is required. How you, if you will palpate the acromion process nicely, then obviously you will do an accurate identification of midpoint. Okay? The ideal which was described by Grehers, he has told as a Grehers modified vertical intraclavicular brachial plexus block. He told that the normal length is 22 cm. Okay? But if the length is less than 22, for each centimeter which is less, move your injection point 0.2 cm. Right? So if the length is around 20 cm, it means almost 0.5 cm you have to move laterally from the midpoint which is called the Kilka point. If the length is more than 22, then move 0.2 cm medium. So the accurate identification of needle insertion point is required. Clinical curves, sorry. Plexus is usually at a depth of 2 to 4 cm. Okay? Don't go beyond 6 cm because you can cause Never direct your middle medium. Never ever. If your blood is aspirated, it means you are medium. And once blood is aspirated, stop there. Don't go beyond it, you can check over. You will enter the lungs. Okay? 
and the first insertion point should be kilka point. If you don't find the flexors, kilka point is the midpoint, that is called a kilka point. If you don't find the flexors, move your insertion 0.5 cm lateral first, till 2 cm. If you still don't find, then go medial, otherwise don't go. Okay? Now, which approach to choose? You know the both approach, you are expert, but how to choose the best approach? The success with VIP is around 95%, but the chances of vascular puncture, pneumothorax and phrenic nerve palsy is high. So if you do, if you are doing an intraglycular block in a patient who has COPD, you don't want a phrenic nerve palsy, don't go for PID. It's better to go for a parathoracoid approach. Okay? But the tunicate pain is better covered in VIP because the blockhead of the intercostal branchial and axillary is better in VIP compared to parathoracoid. And the onset takes time. At least you have to give 20 minutes to 20 to 30 minutes for a block to get perfect. So, block the a, minute ke baad, surgeon gave and see them. Patient cried in pain, my block failed. Your block was perfect, but you didn't give the adequate time to the local anesthetic to block all the thoughts. So, it was not your fault. It was fault of the surgeon who gave the infusion. Okay. Now, coming to the axillary brachial flexor block. I hope the concept of intraclavicular, obviously in 20 minutes you can't explain everything. And I try to limit to the very practical points. Okay? So the axillary brachial plexus, yesterday what you saw is the blockhead of the musculocutaneous, ulnar, radial, medial. Okay? And any surgery below the elbow. You can go for the axillary brachial plexus block. And the most important landmark is the axillary artery. And because the orientation of the nerve around the artery is somewhat predictable. Okay? So according to that, you can just choose your middle insertion point. The median nerve is always in the upper superficial quadrant. The musculocutaneous in the upper deep quadrant between the coracobrachialis and the mitis. And by a single injection point above the artery, just changing the angle of middle, you can block both the median and the musculocutaneous nerve. The ulnar nerve lies in the lower superficial quadrant and the radial nerve in the lower deep quadrant. And you can block both of these by a single injection. Okay? Just by changing the angle of middle. And the patient position is arms abducted, elbow flexed at 90 degrees. But don't go for much of abduction. Because if you are pulling your shoulder much up, there are chances that you might not be able to palpate the axillary artery and there are chances of nerve getting injured because of the stretching and because of the needle. This is a beautiful picture from my friend Santosh Sharma. So, yesterday I think the landmark was very much clear. You had the pec major which got inserted and we, I think yesterday we put the probe here. The same thing, you have to go for the highest point. This is the biceps. You can feel the notch between the biceps and the coracobrachialis. Just in, at the coracobrachialis, palpate the axillary artery at the highest point and just mark, just mark two injection points. One above the artery, one below the artery. Clear? I think yesterday the place where we put our probe is almost the same place where we give our injection. Right? So, this is a video from my friend Yunus. So, the arms abducted, elbow flexed at 90 degree, palpate the axillary artery, draw two injection points above and below the axillary artery, 
just superficial, just deep to the axillary artery. Insert the little parallel at an angle of around 30 degree to get the ulnar response. Okay? You get flexion of the fingers, mainly the little fingers and opposition of thumb. As you get this response, it means you are stimulating the ulnar nerve. Inject around 5 to 7 to 10 ml. Maximum, we inject around 5 to 7 ml. Now for the radial nerve, what you do? At the same injection point, okay, you go slightly deeper. You increase the same little angle to around 45 degree below the axillary artery. Okay? And try to go slightly posterior to the artery. As you know, yesterday you saw the radial nerve was posterior to the artery. I think right now people who are doing PNS after doing solar anatomy workshop, they can better direct their energy. So in, increase the incel angle to 45 degree, try to go posterior to the artery and get the radial nerve response. That is extension of your fingers and wrist. Try to decrease the current to around 0.4, decrease to 0.2 to see whether you are not in the nerve. Okay? Up, at around 0.4 and not at around 0.2, if you get, inject around 5 to 7 ml to block the radial nerve. For median nerve, you go above the artery. Because yesterday you saw the median nerve lies anterior to the artery. So go above the artery. Insert at around 30 degree angle parallel to the artery, get the median nerve response. You get the wrist flexion or the flexion of the three and a half fingers 